In this session of administrative law, we are going to revise the classification of administrative action. Now, as we have already discussed this uh, topic uh, previously in our classes, so today we will be revising the same and uh, we will be focusing on the important uh, components of the topic. So, administrative actions, as we know, are legislative, it, they can be legislative, judicial, and purely executive. So, the administration uh, basically is considered as the meeting point of all the three types of governmental functions, like legislative, judicial, and administrative. And usually, the, exec the executive performs the residue of all those functions which are not vested in the other two branches of the government. And uh, these are, uh, th that is the legislature and judiciary. So when we talk about administrative process, all the three functions which are traditionally vested in the three different organs of the government are telescoped into one single authority. And it becomes all the more necessary to classify administrative action, you know, for the purpose of determining the procedure that needs to be followed or the remedy which needs to be provided uh, and which, you know, and uh, if you also have to, we have also already discussed that, uh, you know, it, the classification becomes all the more necessary even uh, now when the, you know, f uh, for uh, determining the scope of judicial review and on grounds on which an administrative action may be challenged. So keeping all these things in mind, we'll move forward. And uh, uh, we'll uh, first talk about the quasi, uh, you know, uh, legislative actions. So uh, the when we talk about the delegation, because we have just dealt with the revision of uh, delegated legislation, so it's uh, it must be fresh in your minds. Also, that the delegation of lawmaking power to the administrative is a compulsive necessity now. So we have already dealt with the. And we have revised to delegated legislation, so we know that when the legislature delegates its power of lawmaking to other authority executive, uh, then uh, by it becomes necessary because when any ad because because of the you know welfare functions increasing, uh, you know increased amplitude or uh, you know a number of functioning that is has increased and modern state is now overburdened. So delegated legislation is now a necessary evil. It is because uh, they get to way too much powerful, but uh, the you know delegation of legislative power is also a necessity now. So delegation of law making power to the administration is a compulsive necessity now and when any administrative authority exercises the lawmaking power uh, which is delegated to it by the legislature so it could be a parliament could be a state legislature if we talk about india per se so it is known as rule making action of the administration or this is the time when your administration would be exercising quasi legislative actions and we as we know that we uh, call it as delegated legislation now we'll look into what are uh, considered as quasi-judicial actions. So since the administrative decision making is also a byproduct of the intensive form of government, the traditional judicial system cannot give to the people that quantity of justice. We know that it's overburdened, so which is required in a welfare state. So administrative decision making may be defined as a power to perform acts, administrative in character, but requiring incidentally some characteristics of judicial tradition also. So there are are functions which are quasi judicial where the decisions is uh, or the decisions are taken to be when the decision are required to be taken after hearing both the sides and uh, often there is a dispute in which the administrative authority is required to adjudicate so they are performing you know uh, when they are adjudicating upon the matters uh, administrative authorities they are uh, performing quasi judicial functions if we look at uh, the administrative action, is the it's considered as a residue of uh, you know residue action which is neither legislative nor judicial. So it is concerned with the treatment of a particular situation and is devoid of generality. And it has uh, no procedural application of collecting evidence and weighing arguments. And it is based on subjective satisfaction where the decision is based on uh, policy and expediency. So it's surely you know it's purely administrative in character. So now we'll look into ministerial action, which is a further distillate of administrative actions. So ministerial action is that action of the administrative agency, which is taken as matter of duty, which is imposed upon them by the law, divide of any discretion or any judgment. So they don't have to, they have to follow the order simply. Therefore, a ministerial action involves the performance of definitive duty in respect of which is, you know, uh, of which there is no choice. So collection of revenue may be one of such uh, 
examples there were many examples that we have discussed we have discussed all these uh, you know uh, uh, classifications in detail so right now we are just focusing on the important uh, components of it So next in line is administrative instruction or administrative directions and they are issued by a higher authority to a lower authority uh, as uh, they are directions as to how that uh, lower authority has to you know uh, in what manner certain discretionary power are to be exercised by the executive and uh, the uh, we have already in classes we have discussed about the legal foundation of administrative direction you know directions and uh, the also what what are the needs of uh, you know having uh, what is the need of having administrative instruction that all is been discussed already now let's look into the difference between judicial quasi judicial and administrative actions uh, administrative functions so when a body or an authority other than a court or a tribunal has to act judicially while exercising its legislative or administrative function it has said to be acting according judicially and uh, you know uh, in a quasi it's, it's said to be that the a body is or the authority is performing quasi judicial functions now we have discussed in our classes also the committee on ministers uh, powers in england laid down uh, you know a certain test for this purpose and according to this committee a true judicial function presupposes uh, first an existing dispute between two or more parties and then involves four requisites first of them is the presentation of their case by the parties to the dispute not necessarily oral and uh, if the dispute between them is a question of fact then the ascertainment of the fact uh, by means of evidence adduced by the parties or uh, to the dispute and often with the assistance of argument by or on behalf of the parties uh, on the evidence and third if the dispute between them is question of law then submission of legal argument by the parties fourth a decision which disposes of the whole matter by finding upon facts in dispute and on an application of the law of the land to the facts so found including you know where required a ruling upon any uh, disputed uh, question of law so when we look at a quasi judicial decision it also equally presupposes an ex existing dispute between two or more parties and then also involves the presentation of the case by the parties uh, to the dispute not necessarily oral and then if the dispute between them is a question of fact uh, then the ascertainment of the fact by means of evidence adduced by the parties to the dispute and often with the assistance of argument or on behalf of the parties uh, you know uh, parties uh, on the evidence so now uh, when we talk about uh, the difference between uh, you know uh, administrative action or quasi judicial action we see a very thin line difference between the two so when we say quasi it's, it's something in between a judicial and an administrative function so in many cases we have seen that the administrative authority have been held you know have been given the responsibility or uh, responsibility of performing quasi judicial function how when they have to <clears throat> when they are to contending parties and the authorities in charge is responsible to decide the rights of the parties and uh, when when we talk look at the uh, you know uh, definition of uh, when we talk about the uh, you know administrative uh, action we see that or an administrative act we see that an act which is made uh, uh, in the management capacity an act made outside the actor's usual field so an administrative act is often subject to greater risk of liability than act within the actor's usual field so administrative act here uh, what is uh, important for us to remember is that it's purely gui guided and dictated by policy and expediency and whereas a quasi judicial function is required it is required to be performed according to the rules and uh, when we talk about quasi judicial authority it must act judicially um that is the authority must uh, make an inquiry by the following relevant by following the relevant uh, procedure before arriving at a decision okay and uh, uh, now when we talk about uh, the you know the essence uh, the eccentric difference between the two we see that the the difference is uh, important to, to understand uh, as the nature of the act uh, 
which is performed by the statutory authority it would determine the rules that are to be followed and in in absence of any case the only thing that separates a quasi judicial and an administrative act is the judicial procedure that uh, is to be mandatorily followed in a quasi judicial act so with this we'll end the session and we'll continue with the administrative discussion in our next one